Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update. Today is Friday, March 19th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, a couple of things to discuss in the market, then we'll jump into the alerts in the portfolio, give you an update on day trading. Starting with the markets, I'm, I'm looking at the 10 year treasury and if you've been paying attention to the financial media, you've probably heard a lot about this, but interest rates are on the rise. This is the 10 year index. So uh, remember, interest rates have an inverse correlation to bonds. And most people don't realize that the bond market is actually larger than the stock market. Uh, last time I checked, I think it was about 30% larger than the than the stock, stock market from a, uh, from a capitalization standpoint. So important to pay attention to we don't trade a ton of bonds but um you know interest rates continuing to rise and if you look at the flip side of that zb we do have a bond position in zb and you can see that bonds have just continued to slide 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 and so will that continue obviously that's the that's the magic question but uh something to keep your eye on you know we had a obviously the fed announcement on wednesday came out and said that they were going to keep interest rates where they're at through 2023 uh, we also had an announcement from the Fed this morning on Friday saying that they are not going to renew kind of the capitalization, additional capitalization that they've been giving to banks. Uh, so something to keep your eye on, you know, if inflation obviously does get out of control, that's going to have a negative impact on stocks. But, uh, but for now, it doesn't seem like that is the case, at least in the short term. So if we look at the S&P 500, See, we did have a little bit of a blip this week, uh, but then today it, it's, it's bouncing. Now it's only noon central time on, uh, on Friday, so we still got a few hours before the market closes today. But, uh, but my anticipation is, is probably into next week. We rip into new all-time highs in the S&P 500 and we continue to go higher. I've got a couple questions over the last few weeks about, about our bunker strategy, which is our hedge, hedging strategy for, for downside uh, for big downside moves and we don't have any bunkers on and I, I really don't plan to put any on at this point um, you know if you look at um, if you look at the s and I mean you know going back to the whole corona crash I mean that's that's really what bunkers are for or even you know moves like this I just I don't see that happening you don't see 30 percent drops very often we just had one a year ago and so I'm going to I'm going to stay a little bit bullish. Now, from our portfolio standpoint, we're still carrying a little bit of short delta. We still have multiple short delta positions on, but we're we're pretty delta neutral. We've got a little bit of short delta, but it's, we're less than one to one on our ratio versus our theta. And I'm OK with that because I, I do have a little bit of a bullish bias going forward uh, and, and seeing this market continue to, uh, to to grind higher with little blips like we've seen the last, you know, last couple of weeks. And so, and you can see implied volatility now is down next to nothing. And so I think we're just gonna continue to, to grind. Now, I hope we don't go into a slow grind with very tiny daily ranges, uh, but it appears that way that we're gonna stay in a kind of a low in, implied volatility environment and kind of an uphill swing with the market, at least in the short term. So that is what we are playing with. Now, the flip side of that is you never know when a black swan event's gonna come, right? You never know when that flush is gonna come. It could come from something that we aren't even aware of right now, and that's that's what happens most of the time, like the coronavirus. Nobody nobody knew how uh, how that was going to going to affect the market like it did. Uh, so having you know a hedge like that on at all times, you could argue, is a good idea. But for now, we are going to stay relatively neutral and and uh, try to benefit from some additional upside movement in in stocks. The one the one other thing you want to uh, sometimes pay attention to is if we do start getting overextended, sometimes you'll see situations where even with the market going up, you'll start to see implied volatility increase. And, you know, that's when that's when we might start getting a little bit more aggressive with our downside hedges. But for now, we're going to play a little bit to the upside, still carry a little bit of short delta to neutral delta and uh, and play it that way. So that is the game plan. Uh, real quick, before we jump into the alerts, give you a quick update on our day trading. So this week, uh, a little bit of red on the Mighty 90 strategy, a little bit of green on the pairs trades, and then plus 1,800 on the runners, so plus 1,440.75 on the week. Brings us to almost 19,000 total day trading uh, year to date. And then our totally, total summary, going back to when we started tracking at the end of August, 
uh, up over 54,000 in profits on the day trading. So continuing to do well there. Um, now let's jump into the alerts. All right, so first alert was in Delta Airlines. Uh, March 15th on Monday, we did a closing trade. We had a long call vertical on. We ended up booking over 80% profit on that trade. If we take a look at DAL on the charts, uh, we actually put this one on, uh, I think it was right here, took some, took some heat when the, when the market flushed, but this thing just ripped back up to new highs. And, uh, and so we got out with a nice profit, 80% uh, profit on that one. So nice trade in Delta. And we'll continue to do some of these long call uh, diagonals as we see you know, different stocks or different strong stocks dip or markets dip. Uh, that's how we'll be kind of playing some of these, uh, some of these dips. Uh, rut iron condor. So we opened up a rut iron condor. So let's take a look at that. We've got a couple of those on uh, our nearest term duck. You can see price is just inside the duck head. This one expires next Friday. So hopefully we can uh, keep keep around this area here and book a duck head. We've got a max profit of 655 on that one. And then our next one which has the March 31st expiration, pretty close to where we put it on, just up, up the beak, but still a decent chance if we get a downside, some downside to get back into the duck head. Next trade, closing trade in Goog. So we had an iron duck in Goog, price ran higher, so we just went ahead and uh, booked beak profits early on that one. Rut, uh, another iron duck that we opened here, uh, did this one, started out with 14 days to expiration, so that's the one I just showed you. In Disney, we entered a long call diagonal. Again, just trying to play for some upside. Disney's been extremely strong. Uh, they announced, uh, well, today they just announced that they got a big chunk of the uh, new NFL deal uh, through 2033, I believe. Uh, so in Disney, we put this on earlier this week uh, as price was kind of dipping down. Now it hasn't, uh, hasn't sprung back up yet, but I expect this to kind of hit new all-time highs at some point if that happens. We will start scaling out at kind of 50 to 100 percent uh, profit on these long call diagonals. Remember, when we put these on, we're putting them on with small size. I mean, we're using $309 in buying power for this, and that's the max risk that we have. So we're looking to book 50 to 100 percent of that amount. And if this thing goes against us, I mean, if this market just tanks and this, and Disney specifically tanks and goes against us, we're we're willing to take max loss on this trade. So make sure you are position sizing these appropriately based on that uh, next trade netflix closing trade did a vertigo in netflix uh, this one was unfortunate i thought we were going to have a, a chance to uh to to get a profit on this one uh, netflix started popping up earlier in the week we were profitable right at this point here and i was looking for the next day potentially to have a little bit more continuation to the upside and book a profit. Unfortunately, this fell fell down and right back into the center of our vertigo. So we ended up taking a loss on that one. GC Iron Condor closed this out, uh, booked 30% uh, of max profit on that. We were only in that one a couple weeks or less. I can't remember exactly, uh, but got a nice contraction in implied volatility and gold literally stayed. I mean, this thing just stayed centered uh, in our Iron Condor. Uh, you know, since we put it on, had a little down move, a little up move, kind of sideways, and, you know, applied volatility contraction, booked a nice profit, just like we wrote it up. SPX closing trade had a weekly double calendar in SPX. We actually had two of these, uh, so we booked a small profit on the trade. Didn't really get much of an impl a good implied, vol implied volatility pop between the front and back week, uh, but we still booked a profit on the trade. Uh, we had the we had our second one on, and we were going to plan to let that thing expire, uh, let the front week expire worthless because we were using the AM options in the front week, and then we we're going to try to close the back week after the AM ones expired to book full profit. I, I posted a video here, so if you're not familiar with that concept, you can copy and paste that and watch watch the commentary there. But um, but what happened? Is, so we closed that one, booked a profit. And then you can see later on that day, we ended up closing the other one because the market sold off and we got a nice pop in implied volatility in that back week compared to the front. And so we ended up closing it out and booking a real nice profit, I think three or $400, I can't remember exactly. 
Uh, so anyway, we closed out both of our SPX weekly double calendars, uh, booked a profit in both of them. And then DKNG, we opened a long call diagonal, another bullish play, uh, DraftKings, or as we like to call it in the live stream room, Donkey Kong. Uh, it's just been really strong. Uh, another strong day today. It's up almost, uh, you know, over six and a half percent. We put this on yesterday. And so uh, I think we put it up a little bit higher here on, on the day yesterday. So, but we're up a little bit. If we take a look at that on the Analyze tab, uh, you know, we're up $80, $82. So on a $336 buying power, you know, we're already up 20, 25% on that. So looking for 50 to 100%. If this thing pushes up through new highs up to this level here, we'll book uh, close to 100% profit. So that's the plan in Donkey Kong. Uh, next, FDX. Did a post earning short put vertical. So this was this morning. Uh, we actually put this on live in the live stream room and it started to take off and then kind of tapered back, but still uh, still optimistic that this has some more upside. Uh, in FedEx, uh, if you look, if you remember in our earnings course, we talked about our short put vertical strategy, or you can really use any kind of bullish strategy at this point. You could use the diagonal, you could have used, bought in the money long puts or long calls. Uh, we chose to do based on the size I mean, it's a 280 dollars stock so we did a short put vertical and here was the expected move uh, opened up above the expected move came down touched it and just bounced back up and so if we look at where we're at on this trade uh we're already at you know plus 88 dollars so we're already at uh what is that about 20 percent we want to we want to book at least 50 percent of max profit here so with a tendency that happens with these post earnings plays, if a stock opens above its expected move, I love how it came down and touched and bounced. Uh, that gives me good um, anticipation that we're going to see higher prices. So that's what happens a lot of times if these stocks open above the expected move, they tend to either just kind of grind and, and, and stay steady or fly higher. So uh, we will see what happens into next week. We've got uh, 13 days to expiration on that. And if it's close or if it hasn't given us the profit we want, and it gets down closer to expiration, we can roll this out uh, to extend duration to get more time. Um, but if price breaks down, you know, really much below this level where it started before earnings, if it breaks kind of down below this level, we may just close it out and take a loss. Uh, but, but on these, you also need to position size based on taking full loss. You know, we're using $878 in buying power. That's our max risk. So if this thing does fall apart, you need to be, you know, you need to be cognizant of that and that you know that, that you could take max loss on that, but we intend uh, to cut out earlier than that or book a profit if it goes in our direction. CL, we haven't been in good old oil for a while since the debacle of when oil futures went negative. In fact, um, I think it was just even a month ago, I, I, I was testing the oil futures, options on futures, and it was still being restricted by toss. Uh, but uh, that uh, restriction must have been lifted recently. And so uh, we got a spike in implied volatility in oil. And so we uh, decided to define our risk this time. We did an iron condor instead of a short strangle. Uh, so let's take a look at that. First, let's take a look at the chart of oil. You see, we had this massive sell-off yesterday. Implied volatility spiked. Now you've got to look at the corresponding ETF to get an accurate reading of the uh, of the implied volatility. It was spiked up to I think it was like at 53 when we put this on today. Oil's kind of bouncing back, so if we take a look at where we're at here, uh, pretty close to where we put it on. We're up 39 dollars just since this morning putting that on. But hopefully oil will kind of stay in a little range, get some contraction in implied volatility, and and book a profit there. And then uh, SPX weekly double calendar. So we put on another weekly double calendar today with seven days in the front week, 10 in the back. Uh, nice, uh, nice skew between those two. So it's pretty close to where we put it on. Actually, price has moved up a little bit. So we, we actually skewed this a little bit to give us a little bit more room to the upside because I do anticipate higher prices. Uh, but uh, it's pretty, pretty dead centered now on our, uh, on our risk graph. So We'll take that off near expiration next week. And then lastly, Boeing added another long call diagonal. Boeing's been kind of a beast. In fact, Boeing's been one of our most profitable trading vehicles in the day trading room. And, and so we've been watching this, but looking at just a, a daily chart, you know, had that big explosive move, 
Uh, it's kind of pulled back now, so we're anticipating a kind of a continuation uh, of an up move. And so we added a long call diagonal in Boeing. Again, same situation, just risking $386 on this trade, trying to book 50 to 100% profit if we get a move in our direction, but position sized to take a full loss if this thing falls apart and goes against us. All right, so those are the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions. We've got a long put vertical in ES, another one of our, this is one of our short delta positions. You can see price is out of range, looking for price to come back in. ZB, we've got this short strangle on in ZB. So it's been adjusted, trying to work our way back to profits here. Price has come down, like I showed you on the chart, so hanging out right here, still well within range. And if we take a look at TLT, which is the kind of the corresponding ETF that we look at, for, uh, for implied volatility, you can see based on you know, just the slide that's happened with interest rates going up, nice, high, juicy implied volatility. So we, we wanna continue to be short premium in the bonds at this point. Apple, another one of our short Delta plays. You can see we're up about $125 since we did our last roll here. So looking for some more downside in Apple to benefit on that one. Amazon, we've got an iron duck. Price is pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, we've got some theta decay in there. So still a chance we could get back into the duck head. So we'll, uh, this, this one expires next Friday. So we'll look to manage it uh, closer to expiration. DE, so this one is way out there, almost at max loss. Uh, so we will, we're getting close to the point where we've got 60 days in the next expiration cycle. So next week, We'll just go ahead and roll this one out, extend duration, and keep this as part of our short delta positions. I mean, John Deere's just been on this crazy run, hoping that we finally see a little bit of downside in John Deere. It's been pretty crazy, the run it's been on in this in this environment, but uh, continued continue to climb against us, but we'll hold it. We'll continue to hold it for short delta. It's a very small piece of our overall portfolio. Same with DIA. Uh, we've got a uh, short call vertical, part of our short delta pieces. A little bit out of range here, looking for some downside to get back into range. Uh, I think I mentioned Disney. Yeah, we've got that long call vertical in Disney. Same with DKNG, uh, FedEx, I should mention. IWM, another uh, short delta play. This is a long put vertical, just out of range. Looking for some downside to get back in. In lows, we've got a long put diagonal. And this one, uh, this one expires next week. So we will probably close it next week. We had a nice uh, nice flush down. We entered this thing right here, kind of the opposite of the long call diagonal. So we had this nice flush, had this bounce. And so we got short right here, had a nice flush. We took off half the trade. So we, so we closed out, booked a nice profit on half of our contracts, held the others for a, po a potential continuation lower, but this thing just caught fire and raced all the way back up here. So. We're just going to hold the rest of this until closer to expiration. Who knows? You know, if we do get some downside, we'll, you know, maybe we'll scratch this piece or get some of it back, or we may just take full loss on these last two contracts. Uh, but we'll see what happens next week. QQQ, we've got short call verticals in here, up about 350 since we did our last roll. Uh, if, this, if we get a little bit more downside, get above that 50% of max profit here, we will roll this out. This is in April. Uh, so we can start rolling into May next week if, uh, if it warrants doing so. Rut, I mentioned. SMH, we've got this short strangle. It's got 28 days to expiration. It's uh, been adjusted into a straddle. You can see we're up about a little over $1,700 on the trade since our last roll. Still trying to work our way back to profits in this one after all rolls and adjustments. Uh, but like I said, we've got 28 days to expiration. Next week, we'll be getting close to that 21 days to expiration. So we'll be extending duration and rolling this out to May as well. SPX, I mentioned uh, Twitter. Okay, so Twitter, I posted an update in the uh, community on this one. This is one uh, that we had a bullish play on. Um, put it on right here, actually got a nice move, didn't take any off, and, this, and then t uh, Twitter just fell apart with some of the rest of the tech stocks. But, uh, so we'll, we'll probably, we'll, we'll just end up taking full loss on this one. I posted in the community what the plan is here is if you look at the, uh, the short calls, so the 85 calls, which are the short calls, you can see we're at max profit on those. So we're just going to let those expire worthless today. And so, um, you know, so you'll book the profit on those, but then obviously we have the long calls, which are at max loss as well. So we're just going to let the front week expire. 
Those will expire worthless. Those will go away. They'll disappear out of our account. And then we'll just be holding these long calls. And so if by chance, and this is kind of a lotto ticket, but if by chance Twitter explodes to the upside, we, can, we still have the chance to get some of that back. So that's the plan. Not very likely. Most likely we'll, we'll just take full loss on the trade, but uh, um, you know, that's, that's what we do here. I mean, like I said, you know, $381. So it's not, that's why we keep these position sizes very small and we're willing to take full loss if the trade falls apart, which this one did. XLK, one of our other short delta positions, We've got about a $273 profit since our last adjustment. Uh, if this thing continues to move lower into next week, we'll roll it out to May. We're still in April in this one. So those are all the positions. Those are all the alerts. That is your update, my friends. Have a great weekend, and we will catch you next week.